Hello, my name is Chris and I will review the 2019 Toyota Mirai, a vehicle with a hydrogen propulsion system. Right off the bat, let's start with the atomic bomb. Mirai costs $73,000 Canadian, the price of a well-equipped Model 3. While Model 3 focuses on performance, Mirai focuses on luxury. More on that later. But first, some headline facts. The hydrogen system meets Toyota's stringent cold weather start regime. They do the testing in Timmins, Ontario. The scare of hydrogen exploding is similar to the scare of gasoline burning everything up a hundred years ago. We got over that then, we shall get over it now. The hydrogen gas is kept in two gas tanks with two inch thick sidewalls and when punctured, gas comes out much like when you twist open the cap of a soft drink, no explosion. Accidents trigger a shutoff valve. Toyota has been working on this for 20 years. Interestingly, the hydrogen gas is created by electrolysis. Running a current in water separates water into its two elements, hydrogen and oxygen, and at the Quebec City Hydrogen Gas Station, this is done on site. The environmental impact is only as clean as the utility providing the electricity to do the electrolysis. In Quebec, Canada, the public utility is hydropowered with some wind power. Inside the hydrogen fuel cell stack, or engine, hydrogen is combined with oxygen and the result is water and electricity. And it is that electricity which powers Mirai. In this sense, Mirai is an electric car which uses hydrogen gas to make electricity in the fuel cell stack instead of using electricity stored in a battery. The only exhaust, once again, is water vapor. The hydrogen differs from battery-powered cars in that hydrogen storage does not cost anything. You put it in the tank, like gasoline, whereas battery-powered cars require batteries to store power. Also, hydrogen does not suffer from the same dramatic decrease in range in cold weather, nor does it suffer from long charge times. Fill-ups take 5 minutes and the cost is $11.50 per kilogram of hydrogen. A full tank is 5 kilograms. There's no deals here. Mirai is a, also a hybrid. It has regenerative braking and Toyota estimates that the hybrid drive reduces CO2 emissions by up to 30% in conventional gas engines. Toyota cleverly recycled this technology for Mirai. That is engineering with results. Remember 20 years ago when everyone laughed at hybrids? But what is it like in person? I'll start with the exterior, which in picture looks like a bad science project. In person, it was not that bad. And Clarity still holds the ugliest car title. I was struck how it looked like a chunkier Prius, especially in the front. Mirai sits high up, though when sitting inside, it felt no roomier than a compact sedan, a consequence of the propulsion system. The trunk is of reasonable room, and the seats do not fold down. Rear space is adequate and Mirai's rear seats are the most comfortable I have ever sat in. Except the rear headrests, which always seem to bulge in my neck, another over designed by Toyota. In front, the seats were comfortable and the leather, or imitation leather, felt top quality. Particularly impressive were these doors, the soft material and assembly quality felt price appropriate. The overall cabin quality was high. This is often where alternative cars cut costs. Toyota did no such thing and it felt nice. Haptic quality, or how the various interfaces felt when touching them, also felt price appropriate and it quickly became apparent that Mirai was more Lexus than Toyota on the inside. The suspension is set up soft, the mission of Mirai is luxury. The engine produces 151 horsepower and 247 pounds of torque, which feels like a sprightly compact. Power delivery feels just like an electric car. As I drove Mirai, the obvious conclusion is the same you would reach with a battery-powered car. Too expensive when compared to its gas counterpart. Another conclusion is that the genius in hydrogen eliminates the drawbacks of battery-powered cars. Battery-powered cars are good for moving small packages, small distances, but they do poorly in cold weather and take too long to charge. Hydrogen-powered cars have none of these drawbacks. The more subtle conclusion of my test drive is that Toyota really has their shit together. A company that thinks about the next quarter century instead of just the next quarter. The quality and care in their engineering is undeniable. We could see it easily in this Mirai. Most of us can't afford a hydrogen car now, but I can certainly afford other Toyotas. Driving Mirai made me feel even more confident about recommending Toyotas to others. Here are my thoughts on the road. 
Hello car lovers, today driving the 2019 Toyota Mirai, uh, kind of an awesome catch by Ross. Can you imagine that Ross, he brought us to Toyota Canada and had the rep from Toyota Canada present us this car. So I have a few interesting details, but first, how does it drive? Well, it drives just like a regular car. It feels in fact more like an electric car, really, with that instantaneous torque. In fact, this powertrain does develop electricity to drive its wheels. So kind of awesome. I'll talk more about that later. Um, on the outside, the outside styling is kind of like a little bit of a surprise. Now, don't get me wrong, it doesn't look as good as a 3 Series or a C-Class, but it looks much better in person than it does in picture or in video. I'm not sure that my video captured that correctly. Whatever. Uh, it, it looks okay. It has a nice swooping down look. It has a, a, a nice thick front end. It's like chunky in front. And in the back, it has quite serious wheel bulges, which is kind of nice. Um, so that's the exterior styling, but that can always be fixed, right? We're curious about this new technology, how it works, does it work well, etc., etc., etc. On the inside, uh, I would have to say that it's much more Lexus than it is Toyota. I mean, uh, really soft, perhaps fake leather seats, uh, really soft materials here everywhere. Uh, you feel the quality of assembly, nice screen. Uh, the seats in back are redonkulous. You just want to sit there forever. They're really comfortable. In front, they're reasonably comfortable, I'd say. Um, it, it's the goods. It's the goods. It really feels, it, it feels like you're not getting a Prius here. You're getting much more. You're getting kind of a Lexified Prius if you want. The suspension, as you can imagine, is very soft, uh, keeping in in tune with its luxury-like assignment. Um, it costs $73,000 in Canada. That's a lot of money. That's the price of a well-equipped uh, Model 3. Uh, the focus here is obviously on luxury, not on performance like the Model 3. I would have to say that this feels uh, extremely well-built. Uh, much more well built than than the Model 3, I would have to say. However, it, it, it certainly doesn't have like the looks of a Model 3, nor does it have the raw performance. Um, kind of interesting to note, uh, a few notes from that meeting we had with the rep in Toyota. Uh, when the uh, original Prius came out, we said the, the following things. It was uh, an iffy technology, uh, it was very expensive, and we weren't sure if it was going to be reliable. Well, there are still some of those original Priuses on the road today. So I think when Toyota gets behind something, it's serious. Um, the other thing I would say is that as far as gas cost goes, because this fills up with hydrogen, it takes five kilograms of hydrogen. Each kilogram co costs 1150 and you will get 500 kilometers. I feel very comfortable in terms of the reliability aspect. The gas tank, well, it's made of a material. It's about two inches thick. And there are two gas tanks actually, and Toyota has tested this extensively to make sure that it's safe. An interesting thing about this high pressured uh, propellant, if you want, is that uh, it's in, in physics, when there are unequal pressures, there is a tendency for those pressures to equalize. And that's just a fancy way of saying if ever that fuel cell is not fuel cell, but the tank, the gas tank is punctured, well, the hydrogen will escape. It's under more pressure, so it's just going to get out of there. And no, no danger of an explosion. Uh, you, come, you maybe come to mind a Hollywood movie where with a 9mm gun, bang, 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 and the car blows up. Well, it doesn't do that with gas engines in real life, and it won't do that with a hydrogen car in real life. So no worries there. Uh, interesting notes about this interior. Well, uh, I don't know why, but People who develop alternative propulsion systems feel the need to make an alternative exterior, feel the need to make an alternative dash interior layout. I don't know why they insist on doing that. The traditional dash felt fine. The cars looked very good and we were okay with that. Why change all those things? We just want a good propulsion system, but that can be easily corrected in the future. When you have a battery powered car, Battery powered vehicles are very good at moving small packages, small distances, and they have a lo long recharge time, they have limited range, whereas this behaves more like a gas engine in terms of its convenience. You fill it up, 
you go 500 kilometers, everything is fine. Um, really convenient, really familiar. And the interesting thing is, is wherever your hydrogen will be made through a process called electrolysis, which is essentially they're charging water, really, and separating the hydrogen from the oxygen. Well, if that, if that charge comes from a green source, for example, a nuclear power plant, or a hydroelectric dam, or solar power, or wind power, or geothermal, well, you essentially have a net zero CO2 emissions which is very important for the environmental, the environmentally concerned. That is pretty awesome. Um, what I thought was interesting was its application perhaps in vehicles that are transporting things long distances. That sounded very interesting. Also, as time goes on, it just came out, right? Well, the cost will obviously go down. Uh, if you'll recall, last week I tried a Honda Insight and I felt that the price what almost felt as much as what the car was. That car was recommendable to buy without a government incentive, which is kind of awesome, kind of awesome. So, uh, really interesting vehicle, really luxurious vehicle, especially on the inside. Um, what a tour de force by, by Toyota, you know, they just, they just do it. That's what these, these guys do, they just do it. They're not thinking about the next quarterly statements, they're thinking about the next quarter century and I'm not I'm barely exaggerating when I say that and that is the review by the way if you liked this thoughtful and easy to listen to review you can you can like the video if you don't like it don't like the video and if you really like this video you can subscribe and that is it